Hi, this is Russ. I'm with Devoto Golfer TV. I'm here with Marty Dirtson. And Marty is a VP of, of a lot of stuff at, at Ping. Fitting Give me the list. Yeah, yeah, VP of Fitting and Performance. But my background's on the design side. So I've been with the company for 15 years. Yeah. First 10 years doing product designs, drivers, putters. Worked on shafts quite a bit, shaft design, steel and graphite. The last five years uh, I've, I've been the, the chief designer, chief, chief engineer, okay. uh, and worked on the design of the, the new G410 driver. Yeah. So. You did some work in shaft design. Yeah. Yeah, that's my ballpark. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I measure shafts yeah. and have this yeah. online database. So, tell me about what's this one? AMT. No, A AWT. AWT. Yeah, yeah. Yes, AWT. Same on you, Russ. Yeah, yeah AWT 2.0. So, yeah. we've had two versions of it. Yeah. The first version, uh, which which uh, we came up with and I worked on, it's probably around 2010 or so with our G15 product or G10. G10 and I10 irons. We had, I think it was around 2009, 2010. Okay. 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. Yeah, yeah. so it was. Uh, Ascending weight, and obviously it just makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, you play a 65 gram driver, 75 yeah, gram yeah. fairway wood, 85 gram hybrid. Why would you go to 130 gram iron shaft that descended down to 110? Exactly. From, from you know, or 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 you even think about iron heads, right? 260, 262, six iron. By the time you get out to the wedge, we're around what two two ninety? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why would you be putting the same weight shaft in heads that are getting heavier? Exactly. I mean, just both from inertial characteristics, from a performance characteristics. I mean, players need their long irons to go higher, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and the best golfers in the world hit their wedges flighted or lower. Yeah. So to be able to manage that spin loft, manage right. that delivery, it makes a lot of sense. But yeah. I tell you what, the question is, well, why isn't, why isn't everyone doing this? It's really, really hard to do. It's hard to do it right. Okay, and we yeah, learned a lot yeah. from our original one because yeah. uh, it's hard uh, to make the stiffness, it get, get the stiffness to flow correctly from the long irons to the short irons. And to get consistency of profiles throughout the set. Correct. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. AWT yeah. 2.0, the second version that we make, has a variable step pattern. Within each individual skew, the yeah. step pattern varies and yeah, the yeah. wall thickness gradient varies. Yeah, yeah. Very complex. We have to make each shaft as its own one individual shaft. So this isn't one shaft you get in, you butt trim it, or yeah, one, yeah. one blank where you tip trim it and all, all that's changing is the tip length. Mm -hmm. This where each shaft has an individual variable step pattern and variable wall thickness to hit the stiffness and the weight gradient. Mm -hmm. So it's probably, you know, it might be the most complex shaft, steel shaft design uh, no, no, from a manufacturing I standpoint. I wouldn't think of Ping as a shaft company. Where does this come from? Yeah, so AWT 2.0, we kind of have it on the shaft is made by Nippon. Uh, they can, they're, they're kind of the experts at the very lightweight, and uh, their factory is fantastic at holding extremely tight tolerances on yeah, yeah. all the things we care about in a shaft design. So straightness, yeah. wall thickness, uh, the finish, um, uh, the balance point of the shaft, all mm -hmm. these characteristics are ultimately going to control the stiffness gradient, or if you were to measure it, it'd be very, very consistent from an EI standpoint standpoint or yep. get even more technical a JG standpoint which yeah, yeah. is EI for torque so it's I, gonna have very consistent I measure, I measure that as well very right? consistent I mean, torque profile if, if you want to know the difference between a good shaft and a great shaft you just go look at the JJ profiles GJ profile. Yeah. Yeah, so it's fun for us, you know, you on the measuring side in my world would be on the design side to be able right. to, you know, control those uh, levers and variables. Now, being able to tweak the GJ profile is is more interesting on the, the, the graphite the side. Well, yeah, on the, the, on the graphite side, you've got to get the biases laid in. Right? Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. you got a lot more, one more degree of freedom here to really tune things in. Yeah. Here it's kind of a monotonic material. You get it, but in steel, yes. you get it low. Yep. Yeah. And that's just the way it works. Yeah, so this is a really fun shaft to work on. So this is our stock shaft in the G410, AWT 2.0. Yeah. And uh, so it's been great. So you're getting a Nippon shaft. Yep. 
and a ping product. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. It helps with uh, helps with the problem we want to solve, which is the flight the ball higher in the long irons, lower, more managed spin loft in the short irons. Yeah. So it's in a sense, it's a flighted set. Absolutely, 100. percent The head designs are flighted, the yeah. shafts are flighted, and and with the modern day golf ball that's not generating a lot of lift yeah, yeah. through its flight, that's what helps it kind of fly straight yeah, yeah. Uh, and go far off the driver. But it, it hurts players in long irons, mm -hmm. and uh, it hurts players gapping. So we need to do stuff through the head and the shaft design to fl to flight it and create that lift. Okay. So teach me about your heads. Okay. Teach me about the iron heads. Okay. So the iron head is uh, is a lot of fun. Um, okay. This is an iron that goes far, and that may scare people, right? So a distance iron. Does it scare people my age? Okay, well, that's I'm good. I'm not scared at all. So uh, why some people might be scared of it, though, is that they might associate a distance iron with an iron that has hot spots. Okay, so there's been distance irons that the spin's too low, and they might have like uncontrollable distance. That's not good yeah, yeah. Uh, for, a, for a lot of players. Mm -hmm. So this iron gives you distance, but with distance control. Okay. And it gives you distance. So we're going to hold your gapping. You're going to hold your gapping. And let me guess, you designed in the gapping. We, oh yeah, we definitely designed the gap. We do rigorous player gap tests. We do rigorous robotic gap tests with yeah. different swing speeds and attack angles, and mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, understand all the different golf balls that are being used out there. But right. the secret to this iron is in the face design. Okay. Okay. It's so uses a hyper 17.4. That's an advanced heat treat to 17.4, which okay. ups the yield strength. Right. So we get it really strong, but it still has some modulus, so it's flexible. Yeah. Then full uh, top rail undercut. And underneath this multi-material badge, this is primarily there to help it feel good. Right. So a distance yeah. iron that feels good. Maybe we, a little sound as well. Yeah. Feel and sound. You could yeah. argue they're, they're the same thing. Yeah. You, any, any, okay. If you want to test this back home, you can put noise-canceling headphones on, go hit some putts, uh, or go hit some iron shots, and you'll be able to test is sound feel, uh, is, is feel sound or is feel through your hands. That's an experiment anyone can go do yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So that, so it's probably, well, what's a percentage, hands versus? Uh, in a putter, for sure, if you put noise-canceling headphones on, yeah. and uh, you can try this at home and hit some putts, uh, m in most cases, it's 100% of feel is from the sound in really? putts. Yeah, yeah. Now, in, in, in an iron shot or something like that where you get a little more vibration yeah. in some of those modes that, that transport up the shaft, mm -hmm. you, can, you can get a little bit through the hands, but it's going to be a little different for everybody Yeah. if there's any pain thresholds in there, if you have yeah. any injuries. So the secret yeah, to might this... Actually be like like me, I mean, going deaf in one ear, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you're, then some other senses might heighten or kick in, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the secret to the distance in this iron, in the towering distance, so this iron goes relatively high. We underneath this multi-material badge is a technology called Core I, C O R dash E Y E. Okay. Okay. So it ups the C O R of the iron, mm -hmm. and it's kind of in the shape of an I, like our original ping okay. I yeah, two yeah, yeah. irons, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's now where the I name. Actually understand the word. Now we're, yeah, that's where the we're name there. comes from. Yeah. C O R I, Core I technology. Now this does something that might seem counterintuitive to golfers and gearheads out there. Mm -hmm. It actually stiffens the middle of the face. Okay, so okay. with yeah. that you might be like, well, why is ping stiffening the middle of the face if they want to get more ball speed and more distance? We want to stiffen the middle of the face to eliminate the hot spots. Gotcha. So the middle of the face is stiffened, and the edge is flexed. And the edge, it, the way our technology works, it forces the top rail to relax during the impact. Ah. So picture, picture the face is like a diving board. And yeah, you hit yeah. on there while the ball's on the face, the face flexes backward like a diving board. Right. And when the ball, you know, the ball is, uh, is compressing during mm -hmm. that impact interval. Mm -hmm. And when it's released, the top rail acts like the club has two degrees or three degrees more loft. So it ends up going a little higher. And ends up going higher. So let me guess. So you have to deal off to a little bit. So the gearheads out there might be like, why is Ping and making a 30 degree 7 iron? That's crazy. Well, yeah. it acts like a 32 or 33 degree club. Right. And if you're a skeptic about this, you can go hit it and try it for yourself. These things go high. For yeah. a strong lofted iron, they go really far, they go high. So for a golfer like yourself, you may now be hitting a 7-iron further and higher than ever mm -hmm. 
than you ever have, or at least as far as you did in your prime, right? Yeah, and for when yeah. you had, it maybe might have had a little bit more speed. So a lot of fun. And with Ping, you're going to get an iron that has plenty of stopping power. We care mm -hmm. about gapping and set configuration, mm -hmm. and we care about a distance iron that does not have hot spots. Those three things are definitely unique. I had a fitting two, three weeks ago, and I used a hot faced iron, and we gave the guy 12 yards. But we also gave him, in addition to 12 yards, we increased the height of the shot, mm -hmm. which increased his angle of descent. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he hit it further, but that didn't mean he hit line drive further. He hit them up, yeah. and they dropped. If you can deliver both at the same time, that's great. Yeah. The third element, though, to look at in the fitting process is your stat area, right? We want to make sure that we're holding a very tight stat area. Oh, yeah. So if you hit yeah. it far, but you hit it kind of erratically, or the spin's too low, yeah. Yeah. even if you're getting that height, uh, that might not always be the best uh, option for the player. That's what we're trying to engineer into this. So the G410 iron. Yeah. Uh, we made it a little slimmer than its predecessor, the G400, but it has an 8% higher MOI than the G400. So if, if any of the gearheads out there, 8% okay, higher. 8% higher. So you increase the sweet spot. By moment of inertia. Yeah, the effective kind of sweet spot. It's kind yeah, of a yeah. slang term. We, we've increased that a lot. And, and that's what Ping was founded upon. Mm -hmm. uh, our chairman and CEO, John Solheim, uh, kind of said something that stuck in my head. Uh, he said, we're in the business of moving weight around. You know, Ping's in the business of moving weight around. Yeah. That's what we did on this iron. We took our traditional CTB, which we use for custom swing weighting and, and, and balancing the inertia of the head. We removed that and put our discretionary weight on the heel and toe, the extreme heel and toe. So if you picture a barbell yeah, yeah. has all the weight to the right. to, I mean, to the end. That's a classic example of increasing MOI. Push exactly. The yeah. Push the weight out. So we did yeah. that a much more on this iron. Okay. So this iron has the inertial properties of a G Max iron. If you remember our very wide sole yeah, and yeah. super game improvement iron, this is a more tour style package, but the inertia is as high as that. Okay. And I'm looking at it, you've got a rolled off leading edge, so yeah. you're not going to have trouble getting stuck in there. Yep. Rolled off tail a little bit, so we don't have as much turf interaction as we yeah. would on some of those wider heads. Yeah, pretty pretty nice. Yeah, so our trailing edge relief is is engineered just a, just a little bit wider than we would on like our uh, distance control irons, like our I-210, for example. But yeah, we, we spent a lot of time studying and optimizing the lead edge geometry, how much camber is on mm -hmm. the iron in both directions. Mm -hmm actual bounce angle, the playable sole width as well as the actual width that's going to drive the mass properties. Yeah. So let's move on to some of the other clubs. All right. Uh, new crossover. So this is a club that that tr will transition between your irons. Not f This club is not for everybody. It's kind of an option of hybrid. hybrids or crossovers. Yeah, yeah. We named it a crossover because it's kind of like a crossover car. It's like a half sedan, half, half SUV, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a half iron, half hybrid. <laughs> okay. So it's a little bigger than, say, our I-500 iron. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we it, it's kind of like an oversized I-500, but we've, we've leaned this product category out. So this club's a lot smaller than it used to be. Okay. So it kind of looks like a driving iron, but it you doesn't... Know, look, looking at it from this direction, initially I didn't know that that was a different club. I thought it was part of the set. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it, it kind of has a little more maybe of a driving iron look now than yeah, it did yeah. from us, but it still is a default flights the ball high. Okay. So this is going to generate more height and more spin. It, it could be used for uh, somebody that maybe in the 5 iron or the 4 iron, yeah. they start to lose the lift and the height and they need something and to gap get collapse. Yeah, they need a, yeah. a, a you, yeah. they need a gap extender in there. Right. That's what the crossover is for. But they okay. don't want to use a hybrid because they want the flat face and yep. maybe a little versatility. So that's okay. what the crossover is for. Um, and then we have the hybrid, which is going to generate a little more spin and a little more lift. So okay. it's going to flight the ball higher than the crossover, okay. but not as much as a high lofted fairway would. Okay. So in terms of height, we would go irons, crossover, hybrid, high lofted fairway wood. Gotcha. Those are your options for gapping. And we got a lot of them. We make our fairway woods up to a nine wood. So you got a lot of options yeah, there yeah. for gapping. We make our hybrid from a two all the way to a six. Okay. And the hybrid's powered by miraging uh, C300 face. Okay. Strong and flexible. All right. The face flexes the entire face thickness when you hit this club. Tons of ball speed. 
the entire face. Yeah, so the entire thickness. The so the thickness of the face is, you know, 0 0.07 inches. Yeah. It flexes that much while the ball's on the face. How do you accomplish that? This material is very unique. It's used in landing gear for uh, jet jet uh, uh, aircraft. Okay. Because and they chose it because it's flexible and strong at the same time. That's what you get I'm with this material. I've had a few hard landings yeah. in my life. Yeah. yeah. That's what you get with this. Okay. And you need to do that over and over. You need to plan for a lot oh, of landings, yeah. just yeah. like you need to hit the golf ball a lot. So that's really the secret of getting the flexibility mm -hmm. w without it being brittle. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the first time for us from Ping, you have the ability, this would be great for a Golf Digest Top 100 fitter, the ability to uh, fine tune your loft and lie and yeah. eliminate for the better player, maybe they are scared of hybrids because they miss left. Mm -hmm. Now you can go up to three degrees flatter with our new eight position trajectory tuning sleeve design. Oh, we're going to have to do some study on that. Yeah. Is there one ring or two rings in here? One ring. Okay. So uh, the, the, the club, you can add or subtract up to one and a half degrees of loft okay. or one degrees, and then you can kind of also move it into a flatter zone for okay. fitting purposes yeah, or to yeah. centerness of contact. Yeah. So if I see somebody toe up through impact, I can flatten them out a little bit. No doubt. Yeah. It's a great use. Or you can help with their gapping. Mm -hmm. If you can use the loft aspect to help with their gapping with this club. Yeah, you know, or in Texas, some days the wind blows very hard, and other days it doesn't. Take the so, loft down a little bit. Yeah, so you can de-loft it on the windy days yeah. and, and add a little loft after it's rained in the fairways itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then the fairway woods, a uh, lot of options. Also powered by the Mirage C300 face. These okay. are hot. Now, yeah. the, with the G410, we move the CG 10% lower. So what does that do? To the golfer, it's going to be like we kind of teed the ball up a little bit for them. Yeah. It's going to make it easier to hit. They're going to get better ball speed, better mm -hmm. uh, energy transfer, right. lower spin. Yeah. Now, we can fit spin with all the loft offerings I'm right. going to talk yeah. about as well. Yeah. So, yeah, these are these are amazing. We're excited about them. We're looking at the standard one right here, but we also make uh, an LST 3-wood. This is an awesome club. This is a club that's going to be in my bag. Okay. It's a low spin, but 14 and a half degrees. Okay. So you get the launch angle out of it without having to play a 13 degree driving yeah, yeah. style three yeah. wood, but it's yeah. hot, plenty of ball speed and low spin. Our tour players are loving that club. Okay. Loving the LST three wood. Then we make the, the standard. The average guy like me. Right? The average guy like you start with this one. Yeah. And we I make, like I like big heads. It just gives me a sense of confidence yeah, when I'm looking this, down near the fairway. This is a great kind of like uh, kind of moderately sized. This is the good starting point three wood. Mm -hmm. So the standard version. And we make it in a three, five, seven, and nine. A nine. So a lot of fitting options in there. So how different is the shape of the nine from the? Oh, it's quite a bit bigger than the hybrid. Oh, is yeah. It? It's still yeah. still got more depth. That drives the CG back, which adds the spin and adds the height. That's yeah. why the three wood or the nine wood would go higher than the five or six hybrid equivalent. Okay. So so tell me about what I'm looking at right here. Ooh, those are turbulators. Do you know yeah. anything about those? I have seen them. I yeah. take a guess at what they yeah. do, but I've never heard the technical explanation. Yeah, so turbulators, we launched on the G30 driver, and we keep making improvements to how effective they are. So mm -hmm. the question for us when we were studying this is, does swing sp does uh, uh, aerodynamics matter in driver design, right? 110, in 120 miles design. an hour. Uh, you know, I just give people the example. When you're driving 80 miles an hour, stick your hand out the window. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The force, uh, the, the force of the wind pushing back on you is proportional to the velocity squared. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's why at 80 miles an hour, it feels four times as hard as if you're driving 40 miles an hour. Not twice as hard, four times. Velocity squared. Velocity yeah, squared. Yeah. So yeah. The, 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 the force of drag. Yeah. Right. So when you swing the golf club, there's three forces going on. One, the force of gravity, that's constant. Mm -hmm. Really only affects you kind of when you're waggling and taking away uh, right. on full swing. Putting right. and chipping, it matters quite a bit. Then there's the force that you apply, the golfer, through the hands. Right. And the third force is the force of the air pushing back on the driver. Right. Well, guess what? We made uh, we 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 studied this and determined that we could get a lot more club head speed, substantial, not just for the Cameron Champs of the world, or right. the Bubba's of the world, but for the yeah. common golfer also, aerodynamics can give us a boost in club head speed, which can turn into ball speed. Yeah. Okay. So the turbulators were born out of that idea that how do we uh, how do we reduce the drag coefficient? 
Mm -hmm. um, and do it without sacrificing the, sacrificing the inertial characteristics of the head or making the head less forgiving. Yeah. And so we came up with this concept. We saw it used in some other industries. It's kind of used on a little zigzag pattern on some, uh, some lightweight aircraft. Okay. If you look at a lot of, uh, in cars or automotive, uh, car designers hate side view mirrors. Okay, so you, if you start looking now, look at side view mirrors. Then you park in a parking lot, mm -hmm. you'll see these little ridges on the side view mirrors. Well, guess what? Those are turbulators, okay. and they're there for the exact same reason. Yeah, yeah. When the airflow hits the face, normally it would come up and swirl and act like a vacuum. So you'd get, literally, you'd get this force. Get correct, when yeah. it's going down yeah. this way, it would try to slow the club down, like having a vacuum there. Yeah, yeah. You'd get a net force in this direction, okay. uh, or, or a force in that direction that would be slowing it down. Mm -hmm. So what the turbulators do, they give the airflow more, basically more momentum. So they, it comes up, introduces some micro turbulence, which kind of sucks the airflow down, stays attached to the crown. Oh. And we pair that with this cavity in the back, yeah. which have you seen those 18 wheelers? They have these wings on the back kind of these wings that fold out oh, yeah. when you're yeah, driving down yeah. the road. Yeah. Well, that's th this is a, the kind of the idea that was born for our Vortec technology. That also helps streamline the airflow over the crown. So we do all this testing in the wind tunnel and some yeah, virtual yeah. wind tunnel. So you tunnel. don't have, have a turbulence pump back yes, here. Yes, exactly. Right? It just slips yep. around. Slips it slips right down. Yeah. So that's when the face is near square. Obviously, the face is closing the whole swing, so we make sure it's aerodynamically efficient. All the other early downswing orientations. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, early in the downswing, you're going that way. So what's the end result to the golfer? They, can, they get about one mile an hour, the common golfer. Right. So you swing your driver 90 miles an hour, okay. 85 miles an hour. You're going to get one more mile an hour of club speed, which is going to turn to 1.5 miles an hour more ball speed. Yeah. Now, if you're Cameron Champ, it's non-linear, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. he's gonna the rich get richer, the long right. get longer. Yeah, yeah. But this this is good for any uh, any skill level of swing speed. A golfer is gonna benefit through these aerodynamic uh, improvements, and they come at no cost to the inertial characteristics of the club head. Okay. Because uh, we can optimize the a very large-headed driver. That's what makes it forgiving, straight, and stable. Yeah. Gives you a tight stat area. So I see a movable weight across the back here when you're showing me the back of the head. Yeah, that's new for us. And guess what? This is the first time uh, anyone in the industry has ever done it right to the boundary of the driver. This is right to the silhouette. Gotcha. So that tungsten weight is barely outside the visible position of the driver. Yeah. And no one's ever done that. All mm -hmm. the other solutions have been low and forward. Mm -hmm. They come at a big sacrifice to uh, basically the effective sweet spot or the inertia ca characteristics of the head. So yeah, the MOI not, not on to this mention driver. When I look at some of these things, I'm, you know, and you start thinking about aerodynamics, you're going. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, the, everything comes with a cost, yeah. and I've lived that design world. So, anytime you can engineer something in and not have to also go backwards, right. that's my definition of innovation, mm -hmm. right? Can I give somebody more distance and more accuracy or more stable spin at the same time? Mm -hmm. And that's what we go into the office every day trying to do. And okay. that's what this technology does. It allows you to customize the bias, left-right right. bias, yeah. without any compromise. So everybody wants to talk about face technology. Let's talk about face technology. Yeah, so uh, G400 driver was arguably the hottest driver in the PGA Tour last year. We had tons of, t tons of tour players using this driver. Mm -hmm. And the main driver from that was the ball speed off the face. And a lot of that comes and from I, our, our face design. Yes. Consistency across the across face. the face. Yeah. So we get that. So you're going to give me any trade secrets here? Not trade secrets, <laughs> uh, but I'll give you some insight into what we do on the metallurgical side. Okay. So metallurgically, uh, we're using a face material called T9S, okay. and it utilizes a patented heat treating process. So it needs to go through an aging process. It's kind of like baking a cake, right? Yeah, so yeah. you got your ingredients, right. and, and if your oven's not calibrated or you don't put it in for the right time or it doesn't heat at the right profile, 
it's not going to turn out very good. Well, yeah. I mean, you're going to cook this end and you have a gushy center, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you need both. You need the materials. You need the, the joining process. Then you need to age it correctly. Okay. Okay. And so we spent a lot of time engineering that. So we have a patented heat treat process on this T9S okay. that allows us to get very unique material properties, which drives that f flexibility of the material during the impact interval, which drives the ball speed. Mm. And it's still very durable, has amazing sound. The way we make this face is very unique. We form or forge the variable face thickness design from the outside in. Mm -hmm. Then it goes into a machine that machines the perimeter bulge and roll of the face perfectly to 12 inches, which is okay. what we want to design it to yeah, in yeah. harmony with our inertial so, properties. So you see and see. Mill yeah, before face. we join it to the body, we, we CNC mill it. That helps us hold very tight tolerances to make sure all of our ball speeds are really high on all of our okay. drivers. So that, that's what gives you the consistency around the face. It's a component of that, for sure. Yeah. As well as how high the MOI of the driver is. Okay. So the higher the MOI, the less it's going to shear the ball, the less ball speed loss you're going to have if you don't yeah. hit it perfect. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. So we got three. We have three different lofts. We have the nine, ten and a half, and twelve. We're calling. We're calling this the plus model. It's a little, okay. little bigger than the current G400. One percent higher MOI. Mm -hmm. um, and then the SFT. This is a fixed, and it has the weight w much more in the heel, even more than if it, the plus in the draw. Okay. It's more in the heel by fifty percent more. It's going to give it. This is going to give you about fifteen yards of uh, draw-inducing flight compared to the plus in the in the neutral position. And we've okay. always had an SFT driver in our line. It stands okay. for Straight Flight Technology. Okay. Uh, sits a little more closed on the ground. If you have somebody who comes in and psh, they're yeah, doing that, yeah, right-handed yeah, yeah. golfer, yeah. start with us. You certainly taught me a great deal about pink products, and we hope that our listeners enjoy watching this. Marty? Thanks. A lot of fun. Thank good you. chatting with you. Have a good year. All right. Thank you.